when her husband died, she decided to build the masjid at the back in 1823. However, nobody accepted the masjid and simply the locals started calling her as Randi ka masjid. This is the Chavri Bazaar or Bazar-e-Husn in Old Delhi where we find traces of tawayfs or courtesans, their kotas and a masjid, all of which show that there is much more than meets the eye. The wives of course they were entertainers of course they were known for their singing and dancing but they were beyond that the wives since they were interacting with the emperor with the noblemen had lot of resources at hand they were financially very empowered and because of it uh, they had a strong say in the society they were very much respected by the dargahs uh in fact uh the wives fund bhi karti thi dargah ke processions ko masjid ke kaimba processions ko because they had money mubarak begum one such notch girl from the 19th century refused to be called a mistress or a prostitute at the age of 15 she came to delhi from pune and fell in love with sir david octoloni later on when david octoloni died in meerut in 1825 she decided to build a masjid for in the memory of her husband so the masjid she built was beautiful it, it does not look the way it looks now uh, but local people still had a hard time accepting the masjid and they were anyway very irritated with the kind of power uh, mubarak begum was wielding in the entire society so they started calling it randi ka masjid almost like an insult because randi itself was a very inferior class of tawayf they were not as high as the tawayfs but obviously later on this masjid got its due respect it took 200 years in fact during pandemic when the masjid got destroyed a lot and the middle dome got completely broken down it was then that all the historians and art scholars started talking about the importance of tawayfs and mubarak begum masjid in the society and Uh, the title again now the masjid is known as mubarak begum ka masjid the wives came from three backgrounds either they were young widows because at that time when you were a young girl you were married to a very old guy and they used to generally pass away so how will you become financially independent secondly these were the women um who were coming from abusive households and thirdly they were women also who did not want to be part of the patriarchal mold and did not want to get married there was a fear of divorce or worse having an abusive physically abusive husband the wives lived in opulent houses called kotas that lined from chavri bazar area up to jama masjid today they have either turned into paper shops and warehouses or are occupied by tenants some of these kotas that still stand today can be distinguished by the atria or the balcony over here you can see that there is a lot of british and portuguese and dutch influence you can see the wooden balustrade over there the belgian mirrors so you see some elements of the kotha kotha is anything which is at the top floor or the atria as you look at the kotha at the entrance of the kotha the name of the owner is written the owner still lives here with his son the name of the owner is guzari lal mal and it was built in 1882 It's possible that the kota belonged before 1857 but after 1857 most of the tawayfs were purged out of the kotas and these kotas were sold at very small amount of money to the money lenders to the traders these tawayfs they also were very supportive of each other it was a very matriarchal world so women over here protected each other it was about sisterhood it was about uh, being sexually artistically and financially very empowered and not being dependent on any man